Hey guys, if you're like most people, you eat the same recipes on repeat over and over again all year round. And if you live in the US, you can do that. For example, you wanna have strawberries at breakfast every day? You sure can, but when strawberries are out of season, they taste like nothing. It's better to eat foods that are in season and there is no better season than fall or pumpkin spice season or autumn, whatever you wanna call it. This video is gonna inspire you to add some different foods into your diet. This video is intended for people with early stage kidney disease, that's stages one, two, and three, or for people who don't have kidney disease and would like to prevent it, eating this way is how you can accomplish that. If you have late stage kidney disease, please check out my YouTube channel, Kidney Cat, to find meal ideas for fall that are tailored for you. Real quick, there are two dietary rules for early stage kidney disease. The first is low sodium, and the second is eating more plant-based foods. And the way to accomplish both of these things is to eat more food at home, more home cooking, less processed foods. That's the diet in a nutshell. Let's get on to the good stuff. My kid taught me this word shipping, right? It's where you take two people who are probably fictional characters and you imagine them in a relationship. It's a relationshipping or shipping for short. Anyway, that's what the people of the internet are doing with sweet potatoes and black beans. Think like a black bean burger with a sweet potato french fries on the side. They do complement each other pretty well. I've seen a lot of recipes on the internet for roasted sweet potato salad. So we mix it with black beans and onions and lime juice and olive oil, and it looks pretty good. You could also cut the sweet potato in half, scoop some of that flesh out, and put all kinds of stuff in there like corn, black beans, again with the onions, and you can bake that, and ooh, it looks so good. I've seen people making quesadillas out of sweet potatoes and black beans. People are so creative. And I just wanted to say, if you're using canned black beans, that's totally fine. No judgment here. Half of the beans that I eat are from cans. I just make a real good effort to wash those beans, right? I'm trying to get as much salt off of there as possible. And when I'm using canned beans, I'm not putting any other salt into the recipe I'm making. The next star of the show is butternut squash. It's sweet, but it's not as sweet as a sweet potato, and it's kind of earthy, but not as earthy as a pumpkin. It's the Goldilocks of flavor. Its texture is also more creamy and buttery instead of being stringy. So, you know, keep that in mind when you're making things with it. And you know what people love to do with fall produce, y'all? They like to roast it. So I'm gonna talk about roasting for just a quick second. If you're roasting something like this butternut squash, you wanna cut that squash up into thin strips, leave the skin on, spread it out on a baking sheet, drizzle it with olive oil, or you can kind of work, work the olive oil around the pieces. Just, you don't need a lot of oil. You're just trying to get good coverage. Then you can sprinkle on some salt-free seasoning if you want to. Shove it in the oven at 450 degrees, and you're gonna cook it for about 15 minutes, or you could go lower and slower and do 400 degrees for 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how thick your slices are. And for a crispier vegetable, at the end, what I do is I move that, that sheet tray up to the top rack and I turn the oven to broil and I broil it for two to three minutes and it turns out so delicious. And okay, so you can't talk about butternut squash without mentioning soup. You can make it by peeling and pureeing boiled butternut squash, or you could puree up some of your roasted butternut squash, or maybe a mixture of both. And just like the sweet potato, you could have it cut, uh, scoop some of that flesh out and stuff it with things that you want, like uh, wild rice, mushrooms, a little bit of mozzarella cheese. This sounds so good. You can dice it up and stick it in a pasta like this picture. And just like the sweet potato, it can be made into fries. And if you don't have an air fryer yet, Black Friday is coming up, go get yourself one. I just caution, I've heard a lot of stories about people having fires related to their air fryer. Get yourself a name brand, watch that air fryer while it's in use and unplug it immediately when you're done. Next thing I wanted to highlight is Brussels sprouts. If you've never had them, they're a cruciferous vegetable like a cabbage or a broccoli, so they do have a nice strong smell and strong flavor. Like most fall produce, you can roast it, you cut it in half, sprinkle it with olive oil, 
And uh, if you don't like the flavor of Brussels sprouts, because they are pretty strong, you can boil it instead. But you might find yourself adding flavor back to it, like putting on um, garlic powder, Parmesan cheese, maybe a little bit of unsalted butter, whatever you want to do. And you notice the, bus the Brussels sprout looks like a tiny cabbage? You can actually treat it like a cabbage. You can cook it and eat it like this. You can also eat it raw. You could shred it up and make it into a slaw or a salad, just like this Brussels sprout salad. And because I'm a fan of useless information, I just have to tell you uh, that the Brussels sprout is native to the Mediterranean area. I guess a long time ago, they took some of those, those sprouts from the Mediterranean and brought them up to Europe. And they were grown very well around Brussels, Belgium. So if you were in the medieval era and uh, you were European, you might associate these sprouts with Brussels, but they are originally from the Mediterranean. Moving on to pumpkin. Fall would not be complete without this super cute superfood. And of course, you can roast it with a little olive oil, just like everything else. Throw it on some arugula, make a nice salad out of it, add some goat cheese, some feta cheese, dried cherries, hey, why not? Pumpkin soup is definitely on the menu too. And if you're gonna make it, please save the pumpkin seeds. There are a lot of foods out there that are a good source of magnesium, but pumpkin seeds are really high in magnesium. One of the few things that is high in magnesium. Magnesium is an underrated electrolyte. I might make a video about that one time. You can also add cubed pumpkin into something like roast beef. I've made that before, it tastes really good. I got this picture of somebody adding it to a lentil stew. That looks good too. Pumpkin is so cool. I mean, you can make it sweet or savory depending on what you want. Think about it, right? You can have that pumpkin salad. You can have a pumpkin soup. You can have that pumpkin lentils. And for dessert, you can have a pumpkin pie followed by a pumpkin flavored coffee or tea. I mean, pumpkin city. After pumpkin, what is more synonymous with fall than turkey? And yes, I know that turkey is an animal protein and I'm supposed to be talking about a plant-based diet, but I want you to know that plant-based does not necessarily mean vegetarian. And if you're eating a meat, a poultry like a turkey is a good choice. It's healthier for you. So definitely consider putting this into your fall rotation. Of course, you can roast your turkey. I mean, like we're roasting everything. I guess, I guess during the summer, we grill things outside because it's so hot in the house. But during the fall months, it's starting to get cooler and maybe people want to use their oven more, so they're doing a lot more roasting. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just using my noodle on that one. Anyway, if you're gonna make something like white bread stuffing or cornbread dressing to go with your turkey, please do not buy the store-bought broth or bouillon. Make something yourself. All you need is garlic powder, onion powder, and celery seed powder. You'd add about a teaspoon of each of those things to a cup of hot or boiling water, and there you go. That's your broth, totally sodium-free. And there's a lot of turkey this time of year, so you're gonna find ground turkey. You can make turkey burgers with it. Bonus to you if you put some roasted vegetables on top. Or you could make something like a turkey meatball and um, extra bonus points if you serve it with a side of butternut squash spaghetti. Oh man, that is so cool looking. And if you totally want to win fall, you can take your leftover turkey, mix it with some stuffing, with some onion, whatever veggies you got, and bake it inside of a pumpkin. <laughs> it looks so amazing. I can't believe somebody did that. Oh, here's another useless fact. So I was confused about the name for this bird. It's turkey, but it's from the Americas. This is an American bird. Apparently Europeans, came over, they, they took this bird with, they wanted to bring this bird with, with them back to Europe. So they did, they put it on their ship, but on the way they stopped by the country Turkey and on their way back to Europe. So people of Europe started associating this bird with Turkey. So that's apparently where we got the name, legend has it. And finally, let's talk healthier desserts. I wanted to start off with roasted pears with goat cheese. Okay, so most of the recipes on the internet I find ask you to take your pear and cut it in half lengthwise and um, core it and turn it upside down so the skin is up and roast it that way in your oven. And when it's done, flip it back over, sprinkle the goat cheese on, drizzle on some 
you know, maple syrup or honey, whatever you like. And ooh, it's so good. My sister made this for Thanksgiving last year and uh, it was a star of Thanksgiving. It was so delicious. If you're living in a hot climate like I do, you might want to consider something like a pumpkin smoothie. You take a little bit of pumpkin puree, not the pumpkin pie filling, just the puree, mix it with some plain Greek yogurt, add a little bit of banana to it, some pumpkin pie spice, maple syrup, Bob's your uncle. This thing is so good. And then here's a recipe my mom used to make. She did baked apple. So um, you take an apple and you core it and you stuff the middle of it with cinnamon, brown sugar, raisins, walnuts, whatever you wanna put in there and you bake it that way. And if you've never had it, it tastes like uh, an apple pie just without all the fuss. That's all for this video. I hope I've inspired you to make some changes to your recipe rotation for fall. If you did like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you need more videos like this in your life, subscribe. And I wanted to say, if your dietary needs are pretty complicated, maybe you have other things going on besides kidney disease, consider getting your own dietitian. You can find one at eatright.org. And if you want to know about, more about chronic kidney disease and diet, check out my YouTube channel, Kidney Cat. And I'll see you guys next time. Happy fall, y'all. Bye.